Become Auburn Beyond the White Coat, where we explore the multifaceted world of healthcare and medical education. Every episode, we will bring you insight conversations with experts, Become Auburn students, and healthcare professionals, revealing their unique experiences and perspectives. Get ready to delve into groundbreaking research, innovative treatments, and personal stories that will shape the future of medicine. Let's go beyond the white coat to uncover the human side of healthcare. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first episode of Become Auburn Beyond the White Coat. I'm your host, Brittany Lilla, and we're so excited to kick things off today. Our guest today for this episode is none other than Dr. Gary Monk. Now, not only is he an incredible pharmacology professor here at Become Auburn, but he's also the star of his own YouTube cooking channel, Dr. Mont's Kitchen. Welcome, Dr. Mont. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like your family history and how you kind of, um, how it had an influence on your cooking. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go back for a while, I guess, maybe when I was growing up to let you know, to kind of set the stage for everything. So I grew up in South Alabama. Um, it's a little small town, Brantley. Most people don't even know where it is because it had like one red light. Well, actually it didn't have a red light for a long time, but it finally got one. But um, <laughs> I, lived, I grew up on a dirt road, basically, and we grew up on a farm. So we had chicken houses and so we had layer houses. So I used to go in and we'd pick eggs up out of the nest from the chickens of course they'd pick you sometimes a lot of different things but <laughs> we would we would pick, pick the eggs up nice. and then we have to to crate them and everything for them to be carried to the hatching plant where they hatched them but we were able to eat some of the eggs if we wanted them as far as well so i grew up on a lot of eggs maybe while my cholesterol is high but anyway well fresh also, eggs are always nice yes and it was the brown eggs, you know, the real pretty yellow oh. yolk, which is important in cooking, by the way, because they make the best cake. Yes, that is totally true. Yes, they do. I agree. And so we also had beef cattle and we had hogs and stuff like that. So we basically lived off the farm. We grew our own vegetables, um, peas, butter beans, okra, corn. We also had to feed our cattle. So we had hay fields and we had to roll the hay. So laying that down now, I do have an older brother and sister. I was I was a little delayed behind them. I think they kind of said I was an accident. They used to tell me I was adopted, which was another story. But anyway, you know how <laughs> siblings are mean to you. Anyway, um, so setting up that scene, uh, my mom did most of the cooking. My dad was not a cook at all, really. So she'd get up every morning and we had a traditional breakfast. So that would be traditional, meaning eggs, grits, biscuits, ham or sausage or something like that. And she cooked almost every morning. We rarely had cereal or anything like that. Of course, when I was young, cereal wasn't really an option, you know, but so we had to eat off of the land there. But and almost all the things that we did have, even the sausage and then the, the, the ground beef, the chicken, whatever we did have came from our farm. So that's how, how I grew up on that that good old tasting, I would say country cooking. And now a lot of stuff was fried because this was the South, right? Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, I grew up there on that dirt road, and my brother and sister and I both, neither one of our parents actually graduated high school, but my mom was huge on education for us. Um, both, all three of us, so there I have an older brother and older sister. So my mm -hmm. sister actually has a doctorate in education, and she teaches at Troy University. And then my brother is a veterinarian, which recently retired, but he practiced in Montgomery, Alabama for a long time. Okay. And then, of course, I have my doctorate in pharmacology, which is kind of unusual coming from parents that did not graduate high school. But in saying that, though, that all has influence on my determination and the things I've done in my life, even for my brother and sister. We worked very hard for everything we did. And so when COVID hit, and I'm just, you stop me if you want me to answer a question. I'm just going to talk for a minute. Oh. But when COVID <laughs> no, hit... I was, I'm a very social person, mm -hmm. so I very much want to be in the public with everybody and hanging out with friends and stuff like that. Well, Wait. when that happened, when uh, COVID happened, I was thinking, what can I do to have an outlet? And so that's when I started the cooking YouTube channel. And it was to really document for what my mom's recipes were, some of those old recipes. And I was thinking about, and I have grandchildren now, so I was thinking about what 
would it be like if I could document some of that so my grandkids could see this and watch it in the future and actually do the recipes and it would carry on some of my mom's history of all that. Now that did morph into different types of cooking, but that was the beginning of that. And that was the beginning of the, the time there to start Dr. Mouse Kitchen. That's amazing. I love that story. And just, just the, all the fresh food that you're able to get, which is always amazing and really learn how to really work hard and dedicated to who you become right now. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, with your mom's influence and everything like that, what are your favorite types of uh, recipes that you have? So my favorite one, and if you ever watch sort of my my YouTube channel or watch it, there's one, my mom has passed, she passed, um, coming November, she passed a year ago. My favorite recipe that I did with her um, was I went down and she used to make the best, I mean, the best chocolate pies. So she did them kind of from scratch. And I love chocolate pie. It's like my favorite food. I know chocolate pie is not supposed to be a food really, but it's my favorite. It I sounds it. delicious. And my mom was, my mom's pie was always the best. Like I tried different ones and because and being kind of connoisseur of chocolate pies, but my mom's, and it maybe was because of just the what I grew up on is why I liked it, but I loved her chocolate pie. But I have one episode with her and she tells me all the things, how to do it. And ahead of time and how to make the recipe and we're going through it and I'm doing a part of it where I'm actually kind of cooking the chocolate a little bit mm -hmm. on the stove and then in the middle of it she tells me I'm doing it wrong and I kind of laughed and I was like but this is what you told me to do she said well you're doing it wrong and so she's real she, my mom was really her influence was for us was she was very determined she was kind of the matriarch and she made sure that we had education we did everything correctly as best and did right for the public and public service and being kind to people. But mm -hmm. she would just be very blunt, though. She would just say, you're doing it wrong. Or she would, she would tell it straight up. She didn't mince words too much. So I love it. So that yeah. is my favorite memories of recipes I have with her. But, of course, loving the chocolate pie. Now, I have several really things. There's, there's those uh, sheet pan dishes, which are kind of one pan dishes. And I have one of those on my YouTube channel as well. That um, that dish is really good. It's easy to do. Mm -hmm. And you kind of just throw everything together and then you stick it in, the, on a, put it all in a sheet pan and then you bake it. And it makes a lot usually. And you can have leftovers of so somebody's like meal prepping and stuff like that, especially for our students. It's a good meal prep thing because they can pack that up and eat on it for like all week. I mean, oh, it, yeah. it, there's there's great sheet pan dishes out there that I really, really love. There's also some pot, pot. I'm all about basically what is easy and not too cumbersome. Like most of most of my recipes do not have a tremendous amount of ingredients. Now, I might add a lot of seasoning and different things like that, but the main ingredients are there's not usually a lot. And there's a few, I mean, there's a few, but most of them do not. But I love crock pot dishes too. So I have, I'm a big shrimp and grits person too. And so Same. there's one recipe, you like shrimp and grits as well? Yes, shrimp yeah, and grits. Oh, my yeah. Favorite. <laughs> yeah. So there's one recipe I have on there regarding making crock pot grits. And so Ooh. once you do grits in a crock pot, it's actually so much better. I don't know what it is, but they just taste really good. Now, it takes them a little time to cook and everything like that. But, um, you put them in the crock, crock pot, let them cook, and then come back and add your shrimp or whatever you want uh, and other ingredients. So I have a recipe on there with that as well. And that's another one of my favorites because I just so love shrimp and grits. And it's pretty easy. And you can also take those same grits and you can mix them in with some collards. There's a, I think I have a recipe on there about that too. And you can bake okay. that in the in the oven and that is delicious so grits and collards are like really good together i so, haven't ever had that so i'll have to try that they are it's very good you need to try it it's very good together so those are some of probably my favorite things that i like to do and cook those easy kind of things now i bake like cakes and pies sometimes i'm not as big on baking cakes and stuff i do like them i have some old cake recipes that i really like to to cook and i have mm -hmm. i know one of them on my youtube channel i kind of will go around and i go thrifting sometimes and one of the things i do in the thrift store is actually look for old recipe books 
And so I found one that actually, I think it was in the 19, early 1900s is when it was published. Oh, wow. Maybe it was late 1800s. It was before everybody had electricity and all those things because they would talk about cooking things either on an open fire or they would talk about cooking on one of the stoves that you put wood in, the wood burning stoves. Yep. Yeah. And so, and it's very interesting, some of the recipes. What's funny, though, is some of the language is so different from language that we use now. So the language, see how the language has modified over time, even how mm -hmm. you measure stuff and different things like that. So it's in what they call certain measures, like there are some things I'd have to like, what is this? I can't remember what it was, now, but there was one, I don't even know what this means. And I had to Google, oh, yeah. like, what does this mean? And, and, you know, look up what the word actually meant because nobody uses that word anymore. So I love collecting old recipe books and looking through them. They're, they're kind of fun for me to do. And I actually, you can probably see books behind me. Well, yes. it, most of them are recipe. Yes. A really? lot of them are recipe books. I'm not joking. <laughs> My wife actually collects some too. So I have, oh, that's like, awesome. I have hundreds of recipe books. And I'll just actually will read through them sometimes and look at recipes and get ideas in my head of like, you know, this might be good with this attitude or this. And it just kind of comes to me sometimes at night when I'm lying in bed, not trying to fall asleep, I might mm -hmm. think about, oh, this would be really good together. And then I might try it and see how it works. There's one recipe I haven't done yet, which is actually mixing or actually having you know, all the things you eat at breakfast. So like bacon, mm -hmm. grits, biscuits, and eggs, and anything else you can think of, sausage that you want a biscuit, breakfast that you would eat, and mix it in a casserole dish, right? Just mm -hmm. mix it all together. Not actually bake it, just mix all the ingredients together. Okay. And so did that, and it turned out really well. I may put it on my channel one day, but it turned out really well. My daughter actually just loved it. Her and her husband were like, what is this? It's so good. And I was like, well, it's breakfast in a casserole. It's everything that you need for breakfast <laughs> in a casserole dish. <laughs> yeah. And it turned out really well. So I get my ideas kind of that way, just thinking and watching others and what they do and then putting ideas together. I think that's probably how most people kind of come up with some of their recipes. But that's how a lot of mine started. And I probably went on a little bit too long on that. But anyway. But that, that's awesome, though. And it's really fascinating to, about the, the older kind of recipe books that you're saying. Um, there's like a couple of mine that, um, I went thrifting as well <laughs> and I've, I've, uh, looked through them and it's just really fascinating on the words that you see you're not familiar with all the time, but that's really neat that you have all those books in the back end as, as well as your wife collects them too. That's really neat. Yes. We actually have too many. I've got to go, you can see how they're slanted. I've got to go through and donate back some of them or <laughs> something. Go. I was like. It's too many. I mean, I just love books. We both do. And I have way too many in this library. It actually goes around the wall. You can't see it all. But anyway, I've got a bunch. And so it's just a little section. Now, for your show, you were saying that there's like some healthier trends uh, yes. that you do for your recipes. Can you tell yeah. me more about so, that? Uh, so thinking about medical school, Edward Via College of Osteopathic Medicine in Auburn is dedicated to its mission to transforming medical student into caring and compassionate physicians. VCOM Auburn partners with Auburn University for student activities, shared learning experiences, and research opportunities. Students are instructed in a hands-on learning environment by outstanding faculty members that are dedicated to the student's success. VCOM is working towards to improve the health of Alabama citizens by increasing the number of primary care physicians throughout the state, especially in rural and underserved areas. Find out more at vcom.edu. Absolutely. I didn't mean to speak over there. I, I, I actually, you know, have, and, and not everybody's a fan of this, but I'm just saying this is what I'm doing. So um, I give different options. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so actually do have high cholesterol. And so one of the things that I looked at and I did, my father passed away a few years back of a heart attack. Yeah. And, and I don't want to make it sad, but heart attacks run in my family. That's just what it is. That's a lot of the melts. That's the way they're going to go. Just have a heart attack and you're gone. Well, after you did that, I kind of did some research and thinking like, well, what can I do to kind of help prevent some of this cholesterol is high? I really, even though I'm a pharmacist, I've taken some of the statin drugs and I do have the muscle pains that are associated with them. So they're not okay. a great fix for me. 
And so I, I kind of can't take them. Now, there's other options that I can do, increasing fiber, different things, which I do. But mm -hmm. I did look at this book, and it was just kind of eating. It was a doctor that did a bunch of studies. Esselstein, I think, is his name. Aldwell Esselstein is the book. Okay. And I think it's called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. It was a little bit back in the earlier years, probably 90s or so, when you wrote this book. So it's been back in time. But I read the book, and he actually had scientific data and data showing how to change what to, to change your outcome on that and how to decrease your cholesterol and all kind of health things. What it boiled down to, though, really was plant-based eating. So and that's mm -hmm. like whole foods, plant-based eating. So you wouldn't really eat potato chips because potato chips no. have oil all I in wish. them. And they are vegan or they are plant-based, but you just wouldn't eat it. But it'd be whole plant, like a baked potato. There's nothing wrong with baked potato. It's the stuff <laughs> you put on the baked potato that is bad. <laughs> so the baked potato, there's nothing wrong with it. But there's different options that you do. Like, like for a baked potato, I may put salsa on there. And salsa is really not bad for you. And, you know, it's pretty good, not heavy in oil or anything like that. I mean, you can get fresh salsa, which is good. Or you might could put some seasoning on there that's not bad for you at all. Anyway, going on with this, I did I did actually convert for a year. So my cholesterol numbers were two, I think they were 258, 60, which is high. Mm. And that was total cholesterol. And my LDLs and all the other things were pretty bad too. And HDLs were, my HDLs were kind of normal, but my LDLs were, were bad. Okay. And so I went on this diet for a year. Mm -hmm. I went back to the doctor and my cholesterol was 137. That was total. Wow. It dropped. So for me, for me, the way I eat does affect my cholesterol level. Now, not everybody is that way. Sometimes it's genetics and mine is genetics because I don't process it all that well. But that was, that was one of the things when I did that, it was 137. So I know that that whole food plant-based diet works for me. So basically then I started cooking some of my recipes on my YouTube channel with whole food plant-based, or you might could add. So for example, I may add a, um, I may add a, a have a dish that has plant-based, basically, maybe it's noodles, maybe it's rice, but you can add a protein if you want, but I may not. I may just have veggies in there, different things, okay. and then you can add a protein. So my option would be, so this is what you can do, but if you want to add salmon or if you want to add chicken or whatever, you can add this to it and that would be the recipe. And I, I've kind of done that with my students as well. So we've, we've talked, we will talk about it sometimes and I'll, and then we do Zoom classes sometimes and I'll say you can add meat if you want. Mm -hmm. but otherwise, this is the basic thing that you add. So you can do that to a lot of dishes, actually. Oh, I think yeah, I answered your question. Yes, you did. <laughs> No, it's it's awesome that you're able to present that to students because not everybody has um, that outlet to really discuss upon and really to have those options. Like for me, I do have the genetic background with uh, having uh, heart problems and mm -hmm. uh, high cholesterol and stuff. So those are the things that I need to be aware of. And so having those options available are always really great to hear. Yeah, I kind of, I still do it. I dropped off the wagon after a little bit after that, and I went back and my cholesterol was up again. So I knew that was, so now I'm in the process of, I've been transitioning back to kind of that whole foods, plant-based diet. It makes me feel better. Most of the time I feel great when I've done that. And uh, like people used to tell me I even look younger. And I was like, well, I haven't done anything but change the way I eat. <laughs> anyway, well, hey. But if that works, hey, you know. I need Great. to do it for sure because I'm getting older now. <laughs> well, awesome. But yeah, it does work for me. And that is something I tend to try to do as much as I can. Well, good. Um, now, you were telling me earlier um, how, like with healthier recipes and stuff like that, but also um, that your your wife also uh, is influenced from your, yeah. with your cooking? Absolutely. So my wife is Portuguese and so her, her mother actually came to live with us her her dad died when at a younger age and so her mother okay. came to live with us and live with us for 20 years so a lot of the things <laughs> that she cooks and, and my and my wife cooked and my mother-in-law cooked uh, was really kind of good maybe somewhat a little americanized portuguese food but basic some of it was basic portuguese food so like the pork chops that they do in the oven which i did a little recipe on my youtube channel about that they're so okay. flavorful, flavorful. They're marinated in some wine and different things like that. And it just brings out the flavor and you Yummy. bake them in the oven. 
it's really good. And then, you know, they can make a, sort of like codfish cakes, we say, like Christmas, Easter. I think it's Easter. I can't remember now. But anyway, they make okay. those around that. So there's a lot of little cakes and things and salads. So cucumber and tomato, another one of the recipes I have, I think, is a cucumber, tomato, onion salad that I have on there. It's just okay. basic. That's really what it is with some olive oil and some red wine vinegar or something like that. Uh, very good, healthy recipes. And they would make things called called the Verde, which is like a, a green soup, which is made with collards or turnips or something like that, which yep. is really good. And it's very good in the winter. If you don't feel good, that soup is very nutritious and is very good for you oh. and, and very healthy. So those influences there. Now, one of my favorite dishes, and I never say this correctly, but I'm going to try my best. It's pistachio to not that. And what that is, okay. uh, and I think I said that wrong, but anyway, my wife would correct me on it. <laughs> and so, sure. anyway, it's a little pastry cup. So, if you ever go in, in Portugal or look on websites for it, it's a little custard cup and they're kind of like a little muffin tin, a little bit well, a big. Okay. And they're just full of custard and they are the best, one of the best desserts I've ever eaten in my life. They're really, really good. They're sweet, not too sweet, but very, very, very good. So the Portuguese, uh, Portuguese people have influenced my life. I spent some time in Portugal. I love the Portuguese people. They're great people. The great history in their cities. I've, I've traveled up and down the coast there. So wonderful, wonderful cities. I love, if you ever get a chance to go to Portugal, do, I would say, go to Lisbon. There's a lot of history there. It is a bigger city. It's okay. got a lot of influence because Portuguese people actually, you know, went into different areas of different countries a lot of time in the back in, when, when they were discovering days and discovery days of, of everything. So they have influences from Angola and you can just name it from anywhere. They were everywhere. And so all those influences, though, are back there at Lisbon. So you still have people from those areas. And so it's a great mesh of cultures and really good food. It sounds like it. Well, I'll definitely have to. I know I love to travel, so I'll have to keep that in mind. I love the history aspect yes. of it, too. Um, well, awesome. And then I heard a little birdie told me that you're going to be in the next magazine. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I, I have been in some of the become newsletters. Mm -hmm. but there's a um, there's a stroll magazine, which is a, a neighborhood okay. magazine that I have. Yeah. That is in my neighborhood. And they're actually national. So it goes, they have different little communities they do. I think there's one in the Montgomery area, but there's also all, of, I think they're in 48 states so far. And what I do is about every other month, and I'll be in the October edition as well. I was in, actually, uh, Dean Parker's wife was uh -huh. in Making Scones with me in the last one. And she's also my uh -huh. YouTube idiot. So I she saw that one. Snack. Yes, yes. And so, but the next one coming up, I have another friend in my community that is making a dish that. It's going to be more around Thanksgiving because it's coming out. Actually, it's coming out in November. That's what's coming out. Okay. And so in that magazine, we basically bring in somebody from our neighborhood and cook. Mm -hmm. And then there's pictures and a story behind their story. Like, what did they do? Why are they there? Why are they cooking? Why is this favorite dish? And the recipe is there. I also post it on my YouTube channel, the video. So I have the video on the YouTube channel to watch. So anybody can see that as well. But that, that's kind of the magazine. Now, I have been in the newsletter at, uh, at VCOM with recipes, and, and that's fun. I always enjoy giving those recipes and helping out where I can. And I, I love doing them. I love doing my videos, so it's fun. Sometimes yeah. my time does not allow me to do more of them, but I would like to do more of them. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I love to see that you're growing. Can you tell me a little bit where we can really find you on YouTube yeah. or your social media? Yes. So I have Instagram, Facebook as well, and, um, you know, X, all those things. But my big one, and, and I kind of try to link them as much as I can. You can't really do Instagram that way, but the rest of them you can link to your YouTube channel. But you can find it if you want to just Google it. You can go to Dr. Mount's Kitchen under YouTube videos. You can find it or you go to YouTube and go to Dr. Mount's Kitchen. I should pop up. I have a lot of different looks because my hair changes all the time and facial hair changes. Okay. And I dress differently all the time. So you just look under Dr. Mill's Kitchen and you'll see from my movements and my voice that it's really me. But yes, and, and I enjoy that. I, I try to make a video ever so often here, but it, it does get, it does it is a little time consuming because I do all of my editing and I do everything myself. Yes, it does take a lot of time. <laughs> it does. Dedication, you know. that is for sure. Yeah. 
but uh, I can definitely tell that you enjoy it and to enjoy sharing the different yeah. recipes. Well, that's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you coming to the uh, Beyond the White Coat. So thank you again, Germont, uh, for joining us today and sharing all about your YouTube channel, Dr. Mon's Kitchen. Be sure to check out his channel and the link's going to be below. And don't forget to subscribe to his channel as well. Yes, so you don't hit miss alert the... so you'll know when I drop a yes. video. There you go. I call it drop a video up in the lingo. Yeah. All right, perfect. Well, I, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the week, Dr. Mon. And uh, I'm your host, Bernie Lilla. And stay tuned for the next week's episode. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Become Auburn Beyond the White Coat. We hope you found the insights and stories that we shared today both informative and inspiring. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and our website for more updates and resources. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the fascinating world of healthcare.